David Romer is starting this morning huddled up with colleagues in the Office for Children and Youth in Transition at San Diego Unified's administrative complex in University Heights. They're the handful of San Diego Unified staff dedicated to serving the district's almost 3,500 homeless students. And then we're also working on getting some scholarships in. They talk about their successes, but also the odds they're up against. Homeless students perform more poorly on standardized tests than their classmates and face lots of other challenges. The dropout rate, our homeless kids, uh, are at 8.3 percent. We think we're okay with bus passes right now. We gave out pretty much all the blankets and stuff for the winter. Would I be approved to do glasses again for a student in need? Yeah, we can do that, yeah. Each student comes to us with unique needs and they don't have anybody speaking on their behalf. So I get to be that person and I, I enjoy that. Thanks, Diane. Once the meeting ends, Romer heads across Balboa Park to San Diego High School to meet with a few of the more than 30 students he provides with one-on-one -on -one support. Sometimes I'm pass giving out bus passes. This is the beginning of the month, so that's what I'm doing uh, today. Um, but I'll meet with students, check on their attendance. If I see that they're missing some school, I may call them on it. Uh, check on their grades, if, you know, see if they have any needs for school supplies because these kids don't have somebody to go to to check on, uh, you know, for them. So I'm the one who's going to speak up for them. Romer and the office's two other traveling teachers meet with some of the district's most vulnerable students, teens living on their own and kids in foster care. The traveling teachers are in such high demand that only students who aren't on track to graduate can get their support. The first student Romer meets with today is 17-year-old Daisy Perez. She transferred to San Diego High from Mission Bay High School this year. She's been in a group home downtown for about a year after bouncing between her grandparents' house and the home of an ex-boyfriend. She says getting out of that situation has led to big improvements in her schoolwork. Well, I attend school now um, regularly, every day on time, so that's a big improvement. Perez was one of San Diego High's Students of the Month last semester. Now she's applying for college scholarships, which is what Romer is focused on helping her with today. Let's see, da, 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 da. there, there's your user ID. If I would be on my own, I wouldn't know what to do exactly, so I would struggle in getting everything done on time, so especially with the deadlines and the applications for FAFSA and scholarships, I wouldn't know what to do. Rummer also pulls senior Zachary Hall out of class to work on scholarship applications. Family Troubles brought Hall to San Diego in 2009. At first, he hopped between family members' homes. Since moving to the same group home where Perez lives, his academics have stabilized. Last semester, he got straight A's, and he says Rummer's encouragement has made a big difference. Try that. At the beginning of the year, in my junior year, I wasn't doing too well. Like, I had almost straight F's, which I was not good at all. So now, like, um, I'm working really hard and I'm busting my butt to work harder. Uh, it kind of helps to have that little bit of moral support to back me up. Next, Rummer heads to Garfield High School across the street. He has an appointment to help 17-year-old Lavelle Johnson transfer to the school's Oracle program, a self-paced one-course-at-a-time school. But Johnson is a no-show. Oh, Lavelle. To buy him some time, Rummer delivers diapers for Garfield's teen moms and snacks the school's homeless students can pick up when they need them. Just as Rummer is losing hope... Lavelle hasn't shown yet? Johnson materializes. Hey, how's it going? He doesn't have the credits he needs to graduate on time, and he's hoping he can catch up at Oracle. Looking for a job. I have a baby on the way, trying to provide school, um, staying out of trouble, um, growing up quicker than others, and just trying to just make it. He says part of what motivates him is not wanting to let Romer down. He's really involved, more than others, more than other adults. You know, they say they're involved, but actually he'll take his time out to actually get to know you and and he, he, he's really genuine and cares, you know, and I can tell he does. After his meeting with Johnson, Romer takes a quick lunch break, then heads to Tucson Academy, the group home downtown where eight of the students he works with live. Okay, let's start with this, Shayla. Um, they've got her in pre-calculus, too, and she's pretty much met her math requirements. Romer ends the day back at his desk, sifting through the emails he gets back from teachers. So I had a student uh, a couple weeks ago who was doing poorly in PE, and through those emails, I found out this student wasn't suiting up. So we were able to get him some sweats and some T-shirts so he could participate in PE again. Whatever new obstacles present themselves today, 
Romer and his colleagues will start working to remove them tomorrow.